Yeah, it's very important you know, aspect of my work is that it's actually done from observation and not done from photographs. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the reasons, well I've always been interested in photography and a lot of my education was with some great photographers. I studied with Minor White at MIT, um, knew a lot of the you know classical great fine art photographers back in the back in the 70s, and so I've always had that interest in in uh, large format photography and wanted to make that part of my my life. Um, but I wanted I wanted to show that the relationship between a camera and the man behind the camera and the subject. It's very different from the relationship, you know, what I'm doing when I'm out sketching in, in nature. That, that relationship to the subject is, in the way of capturing it, it's, it's somewhat, quite a bit different, actually. Huh. I mean, there's certain things that, uh, uh, certain parallels, but uh, the camera, you know, the medium of uh, photography is basically just light, as I see it. Yeah. I mean, I'm just interested in what light is communicating to me. And what I, what I find so fascinating about taking pictures is that the pictures find you, and the light finds you in a certain way, and that, you know, picks up your attention, and if you follow your attention through, the thing will eventually speak to you and tell you what, how to do it. Huh. That's the way, you know, that's the way I experience it. Have you, have you had moments where you've been painting and you realize you've done something in the representation of the object that could not have been done by a photograph. Oh yeah, well absolutely. Can you? Well, ab absolutely. There is a, the the brushwork, and of course, what you're looking at here is mostly reproductions of the artwork. Okay. These are all reproductions, and uh, they're all reduced. And reproduction is not ideal. I mean, it's not it's not the work itself. It's a, re it's a real reality of being an artist, though, because most people are not going to spend money for what you have to get for original art. And so you try to, you try to do as good as you can with, with the reproductions, make them you know, long-term collectible items if you can. These are all pigmented, all, you know, all done on canvas. They're extremely expensive to do, actually, yeah. but they will last for hundreds and hundreds of years, just like original art will. But they are not the real thing. So. Um, let's just take a look at a painting here. So, you see the pigment, you see the brush strokes. Mm. None of that has anything to do with photographic representation. <laughs> really. So, I do have my plein air paintings. There are some things that, uh, uh, more, some studio paintings, especially my earlier paintings, are more uh, which you might say tightly done. Uh, everything I'm doing now is is really strong on conveying the spirit of the painting through the brushstroke. One thing I think about anything that's a painting is that it tells you it's a painting. It doesn't pretend to be something else. And so I try to do that uh, in just about everything I do is to have that certain feeling of the pigment itself on the surface in there so that you actually can, can feel that it's a painting. Uh, that's at uh, Palmer's Bluff State Natural Area in uh, Wood, uh, Wood County. It's a, it's a really fascinating place and it, I'm going to be going there again soon because it just, it just draws me in. It's a place where the, the nor northern wildflowers uh, meet the, the southern species and they all combine in one area and it's like a like a, a very ancient like maybe an extinct volcano that comes out of the central plain of Wisconsin you know the great the great marsh of central Wisconsin there's this big uh, bluff that comes straight up out of that and it uh, has a really uh, it's beautiful rock formations there too and it has a, a really interesting uh, Native American history to it it has big stone prayer circles built with huge effort in different places on it and it was a place where, you know, when the Ho-Chunk were expelled from Wisconsin, you know, what they call the Trail of Tears, that would be like in the 1820s and 1830s, a lot of them walked back uh, on their own, and uh, they found this place, which was at that time quite remote. It was in, you know, surrounded by these big bogs in, in, in northern Wisconsin, and they, and they uh, 
came back into that place and they, a lot of them just lived there until they died and they founded a new a religion there which is very obscure and I don't know a lot about it but I think some of the whole chunk, chunk uh, do and it, it sort of parallels the you know the ghost dance religion of the Plains Indians it's related to that and of course the whole chunk are Plains Indians really they're the Sioux and connection. But anyway, they built these immense stone circles there, and they do occasionally uh, uh, return there for different rituals as well. But it is a very, this place itself is just for some reason just a very spiritual place. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of old Native American uh, graves there, which are these little houses that slowly just decay, you know. <laughs> I don't know, some of these paintings, like the plain air paintings, which is what I really, really love to do, I'm going to be doing more and more in the years ahead, is I just like to take my canvas outside and paint. If something happens outside in the moment that is non-repeatable in any other way, I mean something very spontaneous, if you're totally attentive in the moment, that you can't really do in the studio. Hmm. So that's really where where I'm going more, and even, you know, taking my, my binoculars uh, or a spotting scope out into the woods and, and drawing the birds right from nature and painting them. So, uh, which means that there's probably going to be a lot less, uh, you know, detail in that work, but it'll still be very accurate, accurately done, but not, but rather, you know, loose and suggestive. I guess suggestive is always a very good word. You know, when you're painting, there's a certain thing calling you and you're responding to that call and in, in a way your, your, your painting is a response to a certain, I don't know if you can get the idea what I mean, but the subject matter, everything that's out there, plus your own inner awareness are all becoming part of one big circle and there's that, that communication and that that thing is calling is calling to you, and you're responding to it when you paint. And the feeling of doing that is is really incredible. I mean, it is so. It is almost like uh, if you look at uh, prayer, for instance, as uh, a call in response to a call. Uh, you know, painting could be almost like a prayer.